This is a presentation on how to build a capacitor-based circuit to boost microbial fuel cell voltages. The capacitor circuit design is based off a design seen in a recent publication entitled Capturing Power at Higher Voltages from Arrays of Microbial Fuel Cells Without Voltage Reversal. The authors of this publication are Young Yi Kim, Marta Hatzel, Adam Hutchinson, and Bruce Logan. First, we have a list of components that you need to build this circuit. There are, as you can see, very few components, and all of them are relatively cheap. We have a breadboard, a microcontroller, a DP, DT, or double pole, double throw switch, capacitors, and wire. As you can see here, we have the breadboard, which is the foundation of your circuit. It is comprised of columns, which are electrically connected, as well as rows, which are electrically connected. It's good to allocate your columns to certain electrical sources beforehand, such as your power source or your ground. Next, we have the Arduino Mega, which is the micro microcontroller that we chose to use for this circuit. Uh, the Arduino Mega was very easy to use and relatively cheap. Uh, typically, you write a code in a C++ language and you send that code to the microcontroller. The microcontroller then through send signals through the pins, as you can see, which are around the edge of the microcontroller, which you then have connect to your switches. We were able to send very simple signals to turn the switch on or off to charge or discharge our capacitors. Um, the switches, which were connected to the Arduino, are listed here. There are many different kinds, but primarily we, we have a single pole, single throw switch which is primarily just for on-off applications. Next, we have a single pole double throw switch, which has two settings, which is nice for charging and discharging. Then there's the double pole single throw and double pole double throw switches, which are essentially two single pole single throw switches in one or two single pole double throw switches in one switch. We chose to use single pole double throw switches or double pole double throw switches because we wanted to be able to alternate between charging our capacitors from our microbial fuel cells and discharging our capacitors to our external resistance. Next, uh, this shows the internal workings of the double pole double throw switch that we used. Uh, it's an eight pin uh, switch. Pin one is used to power the switch, it's on or off. It receives a five volt signal from the Arduino Mega. It's uh, good to note that the five volts that you receive from the Arduino Mega does not interact with the rest of the circuit. Uh, next, we have pins two, three, and four, which act as one of the single pole double throw switches. Uh, you can see that four and three are your inputs and two, uh, pin two is where you can, is your output to that switch. Uh, next, pins five, six, and seven are the other switch. And pin eight is the ground, which we also connect to the Arduino Mega. It's also uh, good because all these switches usually come with data sheets, which show you what each pin does. Next, we have the capacitors. We, we looked at a lot of different types of capacitors and sizes. Uh, on your far right is a one farad capacitor, which was the largest capacitor that we looked at. Um, but we also looked at using uh, 10,000 and 1,000 microfarads. We found that depending on how much charge you wanted to store between charge and discharge, uh, different size capacitors were ideal. We wanted to optimize the switching speed, so we chose to use a smaller capacitor, such as the 10,000 microfarad capacitor. And once again, here's a list of components that we used for our um, capacitor circuit. As you can see, it's very simple to use. Next, we are going to actually show you how to build a circuit and describe some of the functions. Hi, I'm Yongi Kim. I'm going to explain how to boost voltages from microbial fuel cells without voltage reversal problems. We can use a pretty simple electronic circuit as shown on the slide. And on this circuit, we have two capacitors and two double pole double throw switches sitting on a breadboard 
with several pieces of wires for connections. And on the top of this slide, you can see a simplified circuit diagram. And on your left hand side of the diagram, we have multiple microvial fuel cells, or MFCs. In the middle, we have a capacitor circuit, which is identical to the picture shown below. And on your right hand side, we have an external resistance. Let's take a look at the switches. With the given switch positions, the capacitors are connected to MFCs and disconnected from the external resistance. So I'm going to remove the external resistance part, the red lines, to make the diagram even simpler. Now this is charging mode. Uh, during the charging mode, the capacitors are charging from the MFCs and the MFCs are arranged in parallel and the capacitors and the capacitors are also arranged in parallel. And this parallel arrangement eliminates any possibilities of voltage reversal problems. Okay, when the charging is done, then the switches flip to the other end to connect the capacitors to the external resistance, making a disconnection with the MFCs. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to erase the disconnected green lines. Okay, this is discharging mode. During the discharging mode, the capacitors are discharging stored potential energy to the external resistance. And one important point here is that the capacitors are arranged in series so that we can boost the discharging voltage. And if you want even higher discharging voltages, then you can have more than just two capacitors. In summary, MFCs are always arranged in parallel to avoid the voltage reversal problems. And during the charging mode, the capacitors are arranged in parallel, but they are rearranged in series during the discharging mode to boost the discharging voltage.